Hello, I am going to continue reading Alice A. Bailey's book, Esoteric Psychology. We're on certain questions and their answers, continuing question two, which is what are the origin, goal, purpose, and plan of the soul? This section here is going to go over the purpose portion of that question um, as it relates to each of the seven rays. The seven rays are, again, expressions of divine qualities, divine aspects that each of us possess, and the goal of the monad is to embody and understand how to move freely um, and express freely upon each of these forms of expression, um, because that's what the lords of the rays, which this said in the previous section, which are those certain planetary bodies that represent that, um, the highest level of what does it say? The highest level of human, the highest point of achievement for man is the lowest point for them. So what we're striving to do, they can do freely, which is an understanding of these, these components and an embodiment of them to do the work. So the first, um, or the section here is going to be about the three rays of aspects. So the first three rays, again, are the ones which the four come out of. And so each of them is within each of the other sub rays and within each of us we express on all of those levels but you're going to resonate more with one or another and um, keeping in mind first with this first ray is especially because it took some extra studying for me to and i'm still trying to do extra study on this to really understand the energy because if it's not natural to you it will be unnatural or uncomfortable until you find out um, or embody how to embody it or how to see it reflected in yourself. So this is an intense ray, um, but to embody it, you must understand it, right? So starting here, the three rays of aspect. And I'll break this down into three videos for the sake of time. And I hope you're doing well. We shall now express the ray purpose in the form of an ancient teaching preserved on leaves that are so old that the writing is slowly fading. I now translate it into modern language, though much is lost thereby. The first purpose of deity, ray one, will or power. Behind the central sacred sun, hidden within its rays, a form is found. Within that form, there glows a point of power, which vibrates not as yet, but shines as light electric. Fierce are its rays. It burns all forms, yet touches not the life of God incarnate. From the one who is the seven goes forth a word. That word reverberates along the line of fiery essence, and when it sounds within the circle, of the human lives, it takes the form of affirmation, an uttered fiat or word of power. Thus, there is impressed upon the living mold the thought of the hidden, inexpressible ray name. Let dynamic power, electric light, reveal the past, destroy the form that is, and open up the golden door. This door reveals the way which leads towards the center where dwells the one whose name cannot be heard within the confines of our solar sphere. His robe of blue veils his eternal purpose, but in the rising and the setting sun, his orb of red is seen. His word, of pow his word is power, his light electric. The lightning is his symbol. His will is hidden in the counsel of his thought. Not is revealed. His power is felt. The sons of men, reacting to his power, send to the utmost bounds of light the question, why this blind power? Why death? Why this decay of forms? Why the negation of the power to hold? Why death, O mighty son of God? Faintly the answer comes, I hold the keys of life and death. I bind and at loose again. 
I bind and loose again. I, the destroyer, am. So just pausing real quick. Um, so again, this says that that's what was written on ancient leaves, actual leaves from a, like the leaves of a plant inscribed this story of this ray. And this is the ray of the destroyer. Continuing on. This ray Lord is not yet in full expression, except as he causes destruction and brings cycles to an end. The monads of power are much fewer in number than any others. Egos upon the power ray are relatively not so few. They are characterized by a dynamic will and their power within the human family works out as the force of destruction. But in the last analysis, it is a destruction that will produce liberation. We shall see as we continue to study first ray egos and personalities that death and destruction are always to be found in their work. And hence the apparent cruelty and impersonality of their reactions. Form does not count with first ray types. Their energy produces death to form, but ushers in great periods of cyclic paralia. Paralia? Pralia. Let me look that up real quick. P R A L A Y A. A period of dissolution or destruction of the manifested universe at the end of a kalpa, according to Hindu philosophy, it is catastrophe. In Hindu cosmology, it's an eonic term for dissolution. A pralaya speci specifies different periods of time during which a non-activity situation persists as per different formats or contexts. The word Mahapralaya stands for great dissolution. So it's a Sanskrit term in Hindu cosmology. So for these ray types, an ego on the power of egos, their energy produces death to form but ushers in great periods of cyclic dissolution, non-existence. The first ray is the controller of the death drama in all kingdoms, a destruction of forms which brings about release of power and permits, quote, entrance into light through the gateway of death, end quote. The intent of the Lord of the first ray is to stand behind his six brothers, and when they have achieved their purpose, to shatter the forms which they have built. This he does by passing his power through their bodies and their, and their united effort leads to abstraction and a return to the center whence the initial impulse came. The first ray purpose therefore is to produce death and some idea of that purpose may be gleaned if we study some of the names by which the ray lord is called. And for the sake of time, I will just hold this up relatively quickly. This is probably completely useless because it is blurry. Oh, it's flipped. Hang on. Hang on. Wow. There we go. Right over here. Boop. <laughs> you can't read backwards? What's wrong with you? Okay, so let's see. Okay, continuing on. You could pause that and read those names. The qualities and characteristics of this Lord who brings release may be gathered from the following six aphorisms, which in ancient legend says his six brothers gave to him as they begged him to hold his hand till they had time to work out their purposes. So the six brothers of the first ray, the destroyer, gave these six aphorisms based on their unique perspective and um, It'll mirror some of the other ray types like love wisdom. Um, let me just read them. First, kill out desire when desire has fulfilled its work. Thou art the one who indicates fulfillment, quality, clear vision. 
So essentially you can look at this as the ray of love wisdom telling its brother, the destroyer, that he may kill out desire when desire has fulfilled its work because the destroyer is the one who indicates fulfillment. So its purpose is to observe when the, when the desire has reached its, um, its goal and then having the distinction or the, the ability to distinguish that that desire has been, full, has been met. So the quality that this ray, first ray possesses is the quality of clear vision to not be skewed, to, to not know when enough is enough um, and to kill out desire when it's fulfilled its work. Second, seek out the gentle way, O Lord of power. Wait for thy brother on the path of love. He builds the forms that can withstand thy power, quality, dynamic power. So again, seeking out the gentle way, waiting for your brother on the path of love, because love is building the forms that can withstand the power to destroy. Um, like it says, that not many are incarnate right now in the first ray, because it possesses a very strong power, the power to destroy any power. Um, we learn is on this plane been dangerous because like it says, those who have um, embodied this so far always include death and destruction in their work. And it says that they have apparent cruelty and impersonality in their reactions. So that psychopathic nature is the people that are trying to mimic the power of deity in this first ray type of being the one who can cause destruction for the sake of liberation. So it's kind of like a tr way of trying to trick um, causality, the law of cause and effect of karma is saying like, well, I'm serving my purpose of destroying society so that it can have its liberation moment, the age of Aquarius, where we can usher in love and wisdom and um, fairness. So it's not just, um, ignorance, blind, uh, thinking that everything is all roses, but it's also not um, destroying for the sake of, you know, oh, well, someone else is going to clean up this mess someday. That's a reckless expression of deity. Deity has um, purpose, and this is dynamic power. It does so in a gentle way by waiting for love to shine through not actively causing suffering in efforts to or false um, pretenses of serving a purpose that's going to one day lead to someone else cleaning up the mess uh, in my interpretation anyway third aphorism withhold thy hand until the time has come then give the gift of death o opener of the door quality sense of time this piggybacking on the last one having on this ray type the expression of deity to be able to hold back on stepping in and coming in to be that hero. So this is why on the other page it says also that the people who um, feel the power of this ray, the sons of men reacting to it, ask the question, why this power? Why death? Why are you causing de decay? Like that famous quote, why has my God forsaken me? Why? How can you see this pain or suffering that I'm going through and not step in and not help? deity is has a purpose and has an intent and the purpose and of this first aspect from the perspective of the six other rays is that it is the one who has the sense of time you have the gift of the sense of time when the time is right when is enough enough is what i've interpreted as the lesson of this kind of um, expression to know to hold out your hand until hold out withhold thy hand until the time has come and then give the gift of death and death is not necessarily just what we understand as the the haunting death the death drama it says in all kingdoms it's not about like literally dying it's about the ending of a cycle cyclic pralaya pralaya which it says it's just like phases of dissolution being distraught being um in sadness or struggle or um, not knowing or understanding a situation, going through cycles and dramas, um, the ray, the first ray type will withhold itself from trying to get involved in that drama, trying to save people, 
they say Captain Save Ho, you can't save someone that doesn't want to save themselves. You can't do the work for another person. So this ray has a sense of time, knowing to withhold thy hand until the time has come and then give the gift of death, which is once the time has come, the lesson has been learned so it won't be repeated again. Then you step in to provide the gift of the whatever that is, the reprieve from that experience, the closing of the cycle, um, the positive karma that comes at the end of experiencing whatever you were here to experience to help others understand their journey by going through whatever it may be. This um, third aphorism is about sense of time. Fourth, stand not alone, but with the many, join thyself. Thou art the one, the isolated, come forth unto thine own. Quality is solitariness. So the quality or the ability to stand solitary, um, but not feeling alone, join with yourself, unity with yourself, come into thine own and be comfortable in that solitariness. Thou art the one, the isolated. That stands to the journey of two of a lot of people that go into occult or esoteric teachings and learning all this stuff, you become very isolated. Um, it's not a lot of many people to talk to about it, but you unite with one and then you find others. Um, it could be something to do with that too. The quality of the first ray of the destroyer is solitariness. And this goes into the fifth one because it's necessary to have that um, separation in order to do this work. As it says, lead thine own forth, but learn to know thine own. Hate not attachment, but see its plan and purpose, quality, detachment. So in order to carry out this work, first rate types, you have to have a certain detachment. Again, like wanting to step in or wanting to um, solve someone else's problems, wanting to involve yourself in someone else's lessons or things like that, or... Um, prohibiting others from facing their own consequences, facing their own um, mirror. It's a divine aspect. The purpose of First Ray is to teach the quality of detachment, one of the purposes. So clear vision, sense of time, solitariness, detachment, and the final one, through thee the life pulsates, the rhythm is imposed, the life is all, life love life, sorry, in all its forms. Again, through thee, the life pulsates, the rhythm is imposed. The life is all, love life in all its forms. Quality, singleness of purpose. And again, it does this all because it can stay focused. That energy, the expression of deity can stay focused on its purpose so that it cannot be distracted by attachment or um, being um, swept up in emotions, emotionality, so that you lose your sense of time for when things are right, being impulsive, um, having distorted vision, all those things. The six qualities enumerated above express the force of this ray as it makes its presence felt in the fourth kingdom in nature. The effects in other kingdoms differ, but we shall confine our attention to the standpoint of humanity. The purpose of the first ray and its main work is to produce cessation and the death of all forms in all kingdoms in nature and on all planes. See, it's intense, right? The energy of this ray lord brings about the death of an ant or of a solar system, of an organization, a religion, or a government, of a race type, or of a planet. See, it's all the same. It doesn't look any differently at an ant or a planet or an organization or a religion. They're all things that have a beginning and an end. And it just facilitates the cessation of an idea, an ideology, an entity, because we have to have an understanding from a larger perspective, big picture, of what um, death is. It's the ending of a cycle. And going on, it says, his will or purpose works through, works out through the law of periodicity, periodicity that things happen in periods, that there's a time and a place for everything, that things go through seasons. They say there's a reason, a season, you know, and 
Um, I'll put a link in here to a meditation or it was like a visualization um, audio that really helped me to understand this ray a little better because at first it was just like all this heavy dark. It's just like, okay, this is like not a desirable ray, but that comes from not being um, in sync with it as much, but we need to work with it in order to embody it to become the monad. So I listened to this meditation and it's basically helping to understand that we have this power within us and learning when to use it. Um, so as a meditative practice or as a daily practice, learning when to um, withhold ourselves from acting, to hold back from being impulsive, to develop our sense of time, to develop our clear vision, to understand why things happen. Why do things come to an end? What lessons are there to be learned from something being taken away from a person? Um, honoring that process being um, a custodian for this power is very tricky and so that meditation was helpful in hearing um, ways that it can be applied and then the last thing is that i would just tie this to is this show that was on i don't know if it was on netflix netflix or um amazon is it called based on a graphic novel the Sandman. So I saw that on there, The Sandman, and I just watched that first uh, season on there. And I'm not sure if I would go on to the second one, but I got some, some, some fruits from this first season because it resonated with this. So in The Sandman, the main character of The Sandman, he is Dream. He's one of the endless. So there's, he has these siblings and their like, destiny, desire, despair, death dream and um i think there's another one but so these endless beings this that's their role they're the embodiment of and they rule these realms so dream the main character the sandman he rules the dream realm his name is morpheus and he his job is to govern the world where humans were asleep and to be the one to make sure that it stays stable because our dreams, of course, is the collective unconscious or whatever we're just thinking up in our minds and our private hearts that we don't share to people. Sometimes those can be good and sometimes they can be bad. So he's also um, the custodian or the watcher of the nightmare realm as well. And his sister, one of his sisters, one of his siblings is death. So if you look at it in terms of this, and there's an episode in there specifically where he goes walking with his sister death and she helps him to understand her purpose and why it's not a dark thing she's not alone and how we have this kind of uh, skewed perception of death because everything has she just thinks sees it as a normal thing and it, it just talks about her way of coming to terms with what death is what who she is and that um she and those people are not alone because it's a process of a transition just like when a baby takes its first breath, she says that it's welcomed by a, like a warm embrace or a smile or something of the mother. And then all it needed at the end is that same sentiment so that it could feel comforted in this next transition because it's just as unknown as birth is, but we just have this warped perception of it. And so I think that that kind of was a good analogy of what this first ray is. It's just like a re-understanding of what the purpose of destruction is destruction is not pointless and something that we do by um, misuse of power but it's a very particular very specific use of this power and it transition it translates to all having all these qualities which is clear vision dynamic power sense of time solitariness knowing how to remain detached and have that singleness of purpose to carry out your work as a liberator of form from whatever cycles we've gotten ourselves caught in, even if it's the cycle of being an ant, because an ant has to have other experiences, so it needs to have um, someone who can be in charge of allowing that next cycle to come in. I still don't understand it fully, but that's my um, that's where I'm at right now, and I'll continue on with the next. Uh, one in this section of the three rays of aspect, which is 
the second purpose of deity, which is Ray 2, love, wisdom, which probably we're all going to have a little bit more um, ease in resonating with or understanding, but that means that you just have to spend more time with the first ray to get more comfortable with understanding it, because we all have that within us, the ability to represent this ray type, and we need to understand how to harness and control that power in a healthy way, in a way that expresses the divine in our own divinity. Um, I do have another video on for my uh, Living Monad series, if anyone's watching that or following that, it's for the cancer season. I have that completed, and uh, YouTube just wouldn't upload it because there was a portion where I went, there was a song on there, and it has the copyright thing, so I think I'll do, um, I did the dispute of it to show the fair use and everything, and they have up to 30 days to release it. And since it's taking longer to do, um, I'm not, I don't really care about sharing the song, it, but it, it just goes with the first half, so what I think I'll do is I'll just mute out the audio on the first half. It's going to be um, kind of weird, but if I'll just put a link to it, if you just put the song on in the background, you can follow along and hear the song so that you can see what the experience was. It was an exercise of crying for cancer season, which is um, probably not really um, like creative or whatever, because, you know, that's kind of the, the, um, what do you call it? The, so weird, so dark. That's the, um, I don't know what you said, stereotype, the stereotype of cancer is, oh, they're crying or whatever. But for me being heavy earth energy, it was a practice or an exercise to sit down and intentionally cry and go through this uh, a feeling of feeling emotions or whatever. And I use the stimulus of a song. So there was a song that I heard and I was like, oh, wow, this is a really um, powerful song and the video that I watched it all went together. So I was just recording myself going through that process as one of the um, exercises for living Mona for body being in the body, feeling that feelings and expressing, um, so listening to that song. So again, I think I'll just mute out that first part for body and put a link to the song so you can watch the video and I'll still upload the video here so it can be here as part of the series. And then, um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end and I will see you next time. Take care.